Hey everyone, Urban Fishkeeper here and I hope you're all doing well and you've had a good weekend or having a good weekend and you had a good week. So quite a few people um, I think figured it out anyway that the forefoot that I was that the channel was donated was going to end up being a marine aquarium anyway. Um, so this is it. Um, I've set it up as a marine tank um, and really what I wanted to do today was really just run you through what I've done and then deal with the elephant in the room which is uh, two weeks ago I was building a frame for this and how is it possible that I've got fish swimming around in it uh, two weeks later so I'll go through that as well just to give you a bit of a rundown so the tank itself as you all know is just the standard four foot um, the frame is a pine frame or the stand is a pine stand that I built and I did a short video on that uh, the rock on the inside is not live rock, it's uh, the Fiji man-made rock. And the reason I went with that is because right up front I said I'd like to try and use 80% of what I've got to set this up um, and spend as little as possible. So it probably hasn't worked out 80% of me using what I've got. Um, I've probably ended up with a lot, spending a lot more than 20% or 20% and using less than 80% of what I've got but the the rock itself was probably the cheapest option to try and get some rock in the tank so I went with the Fiji um, the man-made man-made rock uh, from a filtration point of view obviously it's running the sump down here and I'll go through that in a little bit more detail now the other thing I did say is because of the age of the aquarium I wasn't going to drill any holes and what I've done is I've made use of an overflow system and that overflow system runs flows over the back and it flows these two thick pipes the back here flow go from the back box and it works exactly on the same principle as um, where the video that I did on how to heat multiple aquariums where you pump water in the one side the pressure pushes through the pipe the one side and it then flows over to the other side the box and the other side so it's purely got an overflow box the overflow box then runs down into the first chamber of the sump and then it works through from there. The other thing I do have running, which is something that I had in the garage from years back, is I've got a Halia chiller unit. Uh, this is fish only anyway, so uh, temperature probably not so much of an issue, but it does get warm in here. The average temperature over the week inside this room has been around 27.7, 28 degrees because I'm now monitoring that. Um, and the chiller I've got set at 25 so when it reaches 26 it kicks on and it cools it back down to 25. I suppose that's the downside to these these Halia uh, chillers is that they're, they're increments of one degree and you can't do half a degree or part of a degree um, but it's better than nothing and this is the 300A uh, that I've got running here. So I've got the chiller running the other thing that I'm, the pump that I'm using to pump the water back up to the main tank from the sump, I'm using an Aquamedic 5.3 and this is the control unit for the Aquamedic gear and I'm running that Aquamedic at 60% at the moment. Uh, it can do, um, it's the five, it's, it can do 5,000 litres per hour at a head height of three and a half metres. Um, I've reduced it right down to 60% of flow and the nice thing about these new well the newer pumps that are coming out nowadays is that they're, they're um, DC um, powered as well so you run it with a little um, power supply and that means that you can regulate uh, the voltage going through to the pump and you can reduce uh, the, the flow that way so at the moment I'm running that at 60% um, and that's the Aquamedic 5.3. Nice thing as well, you can app on your phone and you can modify and do whatever you need to on your phone. The other thing is from a skimmer point of view, I'm running um, the Bubble Magnus, um, I'm running the Curve 5 and at the moment, realistically, I mean this is only week two, uh, the, the, the skimmer is still really running in. Um, and you know the skim will still take another week or two to settle and while it's doing that I'm just tweaking on the skimmer slightly just to get it settled and running correctly. Uh, sand in the bottom is just normal coral sand, it's grade 3 sand 
Um, and sorry that I'm sitting bent forward like this, but I, to fit it in with a camera, that's what I have to do. Now, the other thing is what's interesting here is the media. What media am I using? Now, this has been a bit of a change in mindset for me personally, because years gone by, um, when you ran a marine aquarium, you know, there was really two choices. Either you put as much media as you could in your sump, and it was normal coral, coral pieces that you put in there, the coral chunks, or you just absolutely packed it with live rock. And that's, and that's what you ran, that and the skimmer. Um, what I've gone with is I've actually gone with the nanotech um, biological media. And the nanotech is very similar to the marine pure. Now, the question is, why didn't I go with the Marine Pure? Simply this, one is the Marine Pure is probably double the price. And the other thing is that the Marine Pure, to my knowledge, breaks down after a while. Uh, the Nanotech does not. Now, to give an indication, let me just grab one of these little balls out here. All right, so this is what these little Nanotech balls look like. All right, they're extremely porous. My, my understanding is that you're looking at about 54 or so squared meters per sphere. And so that's a massive surface area. Now from a, uh, from a filter point of view, one kilogram of this, which is about 40 of these little balls, can do about two and a half thousand liters, filter about two and a half thousand liters of water. Now there's, there's various companies that make the, the nanotech type bio um, fault, um, media. And, and it's really, it, it, if you look at it, it looks like it's just tiny like little ceramic balls that have been all put together. And if you blow on it, it's quite, it just pushes all the water, um, but it's quite porous. Now, what I've done, and, and uh, so they make two, you get the nanotech in little balls and you get the nanotech in a block um, which is the same as the marine pure block. Now the block, one block can do also about two and a half to 2,700 liters. It's capable of filtering um, uh, from one of those blocks. Now, 40 is enough for about two and a half of the, of the little spheres. 40 is about enough for about two and a half thousand liters. We know we're near this. We're like a tenth of that here from a water point of view. But what I did is I put 40 in when I started the tank running up in week one. And then at the end of week one, when I was happy that the salinity was right, <coughs> excuse me, from a salinity point of view, I'm running uh, 1.026, which if I recall correctly, I think is 35 parts per thousand, so 35 PPT. Um, because of the fish only system, I am slowly gonna bring it slightly down and not keep it at 2.6, which is more suited to your corals anyway. Um, what I did is I put 40, uh, 40 of them in. Um, oh, sorry, I put 50 in of the spheres, so more than enough media. And then what I did at the end of week one is, and, and you can do this more with marine aquariums than you can with fresh, and the only reason you can do what I'm about to tell you is because with marine aquariums, a lot of the suppliers have massive sumps as where with fresh water they don't have massive sumps they're normally just running them with sponge or individual filters so it's easier to get media from a store that you buy from so what i did is the store that i bought the uh the little nanos from um the the filter media what i then did is i went back to that store and i then bought another 30 out of one of their established filters full of bacteria ready to go. Now that 30 more than adequately would cope with the load in this tank. And that is why I was able to put 30 of those um, little balls in, uh, filter balls. They'd been running in, 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 this, in um, this store's aquarium or in their sum for ages. It was packed with bacteria. I could throw 30 in there. All my other parameters and my water and everything else was good and I could immediately add fish to it. Now, I'm not recommending that that's how people do it, because what you need to, and what I did is week, at the end of week one, I just added in the two clowns. And then at the end of week two, I then went and added in, um, some people call it a banner fish, 
poor man's Moorish wimple. Um, so I put that in um, and then uh, the little fire gobies, two of those a week later, which was effectively yesterday. Uh, what I have been doing though is I have been watching the water. So I've been looking at the ammonia because obviously, you know, I want to make sure that the, the bacteria that I've brought in was coping with the load in the system and I've also the bio load and I've also haven't been feeding heavy. Um, I've been keeping the feeding reasonably low to, to give the aquarium a chance to, to catch up with what's happening. Um, I checked it this morning and the ammonia is slightly up so I just need to keep an eye on that. Um, the other readings all, all look good. So you know I won't necessarily recommend that that's how you do it but, but it is an option if you can you know, if you can get to a, an aquarium store and, you know, they sell these kind of spheres and you can just go in and say, well, look, <clears throat> I'd like to buy 50 of them, um, you know, and you just buy 50 out of their sump that's been established and running for a while. Of course, you run the risk of whatever <clears throat> bad things they may have in there, you're going to get with it. Um, but to me, you know, I was comfortable that um, I probably would, you know, I probably wasn't going to get anything bad coming with it. So you just buy a whole lot of these, throw it into your sump, and effectively your sump's ready to go. Um, you've got bacteria, bacteria's there, and you're ready to add fish. And the fish are looking okay. Fish look reasonably happy, the clowns are looking okay, the goat is looking fine. But again, you know, I'll keep an eye on it. I'm not recommending that the method I used is one that everybody should try and try and use. You know, you probably, you know, if you're not sure, you don't know how to check water, um, and, and you're not quite comfortable, then you know, do it the normal method. Get the tank up and running, get it established, make sure all of the parameters of the water are right. Um, get, you know, give it the good six weeks for it to run, slowly introduce, add one fish, and then so on, you build up from there, and not go from zero to five fish in two weeks, um, the way that I've done it. Other than that, uh, straightforward. You know, it's got a bit of sponge in the sump, um, Protein skimmer, as I've said, there's a heater in there as well. Don't need it at the moment, it's, it's really hot in this room. Um, and the water pumps back and, and flows over. The other thing I do have in, and I don't know if you can see it if I move slightly back, in here I've got an Ecotech uh, wave maker as well. Uh, the wave maker and the pump is off at the moment, uh, but I've got an Ecotech wave maker in there as well. Um, that that runs and I've just set it to run at about 20% at the moment, 20% strength just to provide some current in the aquarium. Anyway guys that's it, um, I just wanted to share with you what I've done with the forefoot um, and where we're at. Oh from a lighting point of view I'm running the Fluval 3.0, the Fluval Marine. Um, that light's probably more than adequate to run things like soft corals but anything above that and anemones and so forth but anything above that you probably need to um, invest in a little bit more, you know, uh, top-end lighting. Um, but, you know, it serves the purpose well, it's controllable, um, and I run it, um, and now it's running quite high, uh, just while I'm making the video, but I normally run it at about 30%, 25 to 30%, a little bit more on the blue. And the reason I'm doing that as well is, I don't necessarily want to get any major algae growth in here, uh, to start with, and that's the risk that you're running that initial period of getting your marine tank up and running. So I'm keeping the lighting slightly down. From a seawater point of view, I've just used synthetic. Ideally what you want to do is you want to mix your synthetic with RO water. Um, of course I was in a hurry and I couldn't wait for my RO unit to, which is really slow to make me the water, so I used tap water. Not ideal and I wouldn't recommend it. One is you add a lot of silicas and other stuff into the water. And again, if you then increase your lighting, you're almost guaranteed you're going to have a whole lot of horrible algae in your tank. So go with RO water and synthetic. The other option, of course, is if, you, if you're able to get actual seawater, you can do that option as well. And I may actually use that for water changes because uh, it's not too far for me to go to collect seawater. Anyway, I think, I think that's about it. I wanted to give everybody just a rundown. I'll keep you updated on how this tank's going. <coughs> Excuse me, I'll keep you updated on as we add things. Um, I'll probably spend a bit more time as well at some stage just going through the overflow box. Because the overflow box, whether it be marine or freshwater, is, is a really good, good concept to use if you want to use a sump without having to drill. Um, 
And other than that, there's, there's not a lot more to say. All right, guys, well, that's probably it from me. Um, if there's anything in particular that you'd like me to go through around this tank or around this setup, just pop it in the, in the comments below and I can address it in the next video. Um, what I'll do is I'll, I'll probably just, yeah, next week I'll probably just go through, um, depending on what questions I get, I might go through something more around this or otherwise we'll talk about some killifish as well again next week and some of the breeding around killifish. All right, guys, have an awesome weekend. Um, what I'll do is, maybe what I can do is just the end of the video, I'll just pause it here quickly. I'll grab the camera and I can just show you how everything's running and how it looks. Um, and then we'll finish it off. All right, um, that was just quickly um, me showing the sump um, as well as the tank and you could also see the overflow box at the back. So if there's any questions around any of those things you want to know a bit more, just drop me a comment below and I'll answer them in the next video. Other thing is apologies for the shining, the two lights in the reflection in the tank, but um, struggling a bit to get the camera set up close enough get a bit of light as well so that it's not too dark in the room um, anyway hopefully it's okay all right guys have a awesome weekend further have a really good week uh, take care of yourselves be safe till, till our next video urban fish keeper out